Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What well, looks to me like weakness is a canvas for his strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. Bell, you won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Bell, you won't define me, that's what my father does. Help me out. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the Father's house, check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Bible's not the end game, the journey's where you are. You never want it perfect, you just want it my heart. And the story isn't over, if the story isn't good. Failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Come on. Failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Ooh. Lay your burdens down Ooh, Here in the Father's house Check your shame at the door Sit and welcome many more Prodigals come home, the helpless find hope. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Yeah. Prison doors swing wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Hey, miracles take place, the cynical find faith. Love is breaking through. When the father's in the room, hey, Jericho walls are quaking, strongholds now are shaking, love is breaking through. When the father's in the room, love is breaking through. When the father's in the room, hey, ooh, lay your burdens down. Check your shame at the door. It ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. How about that? Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. Come on. Check your shame at the door. It ain't welcome anymore. Hey. You're in the Father's house. Good morning. All right. We're going to go over to the plaza in Elwood City, and we're going to get a spring harvest and get some people saved. That's a good thing. I'm glad somebody said, oh, share Jesus with me. But that's on it. And we're going to meet at 1045 in the morning, and then we're going to go out and just pass out some tracks and get some people saved and healed and delivered. The 23rd is Dave DeMarco is going to be doing our praise and worship in the morning. He was going to be uh, leading praise and worship. But that's Sunday, May 23rd at 10 a.m. And then that night, we're going to have an opportunity to have Dave. He's going to have a free concert. We're going to come out. And it's so good to get into the presence of God and bless him. It is so refreshing to, to spend time with God. Oh, it's, it's really good. <laughs> um, July 18th. A special speaker, Marilyn Neubauer, is coming. She's a Raymer graduate. She was miraculously healed of cancer. And the advantage of coming and see that, it would be able to bring friends, people who are suffering and having problems, because faith comes by hearing and hearing. And our pastor did an excellent teaching on the blood of Jesus. And there's power in it. There, is, there are five CDs, and it costs 15 bucks. They're in the lobby out there. And I'd encourage you to get it and listen to it. Um, it's just a great opportunity to build your faith. 
in the blood of Jesus. We're having water baptism coming up, and I left my shirt over there. May I? And this is it. If you come, we're, we're, uh, or just let me know if you're interested in doing it, we'll, we'll get you a certificate, and then you actually get a shirt. Isn't that neat? Yeah. So that's, that's to show that 2 Corinthians 5, 17, uh, made new in Christ. Oh, how you say yes. amen to that. Hallelujah. That is very good. In fact, in Psalm 36 and verse 7 talks about how precious is your loving kindness. How precious God loves us. And that is so important. That is really good. That is excellent. So let's all stand up. We're going to praise the Lord tonight and enjoy his presence. And aren't we glad Pastor Matt is back? Uh, and his arm and his leg. We're so glad you're back. We missed you. We missed you. Yeah. Yeah. We miss Maria, too, and the, all the kids. Yeah. Father, we're going to thank you tonight. We're going to bless you and give you praise. Love on you tonight. Look to you to be that author and finisher of our faith. And we're thankful that you are precious to us, and we are precious to you in Jesus' name. Amen. You are God tonight, Lord. You are all we're living for. Here I am. I've come to find you. Here I am to see, to see your grace. To bring to you an offering. To bring to you an offer. I have to ask, I have to ask myself one thing. How can I do anything but praise? I praise oh, you, you are God, you are Lord, you are all I'm living for, you are king of everything, want my life to praise you, oh, here we are Lord, here I am, I've come to thank you, I've come to thank you. Here I am, a life you've changed Because you gave your life for me You crucified your son for me Now how can I do anything but praise And I praise, oh And you, you are God, you are Lord you are all I'm living for. You are king of everything. I want my life to praise you. You are God. You are Lord. You are all I'm living for. You are king of everything. I want my life to praise you. You are God, you are Lord, you are all I'm living for. You are King of everything, I want my life to praise you. You are God, you are Lord, you are all I'm living for. You are King of everything, I want my life to praise you. Want my life to praise you, yeah. I praise you, Lord. We want our life to praise you, Lord. You are king of everything. We declare you king of our homes, king of our lives, king of our jobs. Be the Lord of it all in Jesus' name. You reign supreme. We surrender to you. I heard a preacher say the other day that a heart and will are the same word in the Bible. So, God, we, we not just say we love you with our heart, but we, we live it out with our wills tonight. In Jesus' name. Let our praise, 
let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for you. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven. Let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your life. We are here for you. We are here for you. To you, to you, our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy. Only you are worthy, God. Let your fire fall out. Let us shout. Let our shout be your anthem, your renown. Fill the sky, we are here for you. Hey, yes we are, we are here. We are here for you. Let your word move in power. Let what's dead come to life. We are here for you. We are here for you. To you our hearts, to you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy, God. Let your fire fall down to your hearts, to you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden, you are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy, God. Let your fire fall down. Let it fall. welcome in this place tonight, Lord. We just praise you, Lord. We welcome you with praise on our lips. We say you are wonderful. You are glorious. Just make yourself known to every person watching and every person in this room tonight. Let the healing balm of Gilead fall from the top of our head to the soles of our feet, Lord. Let healing take place in our bodies, in our emotions, in our minds. 
thank you, Lord. You not only died for our sins, Jesus, but you died to make us whole. Every whit whole tonight in Jesus' name. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus and nothing matters nothing in this world will do Jesus you're the center everything revolves around you Jesus you sing with us tonight Jesus be the center of my life. Jesus be the center of my life. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, and nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Yeah. Jesus, you're the center, and everything revolves around you. Jesus, you from my heart to the heavens. Jesus, be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about. We confess it tonight. From my heart to the heavens. Jesus, be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens. Jesus, be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all. Let's sing it out. From my heart to the heavens. Jesus, be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. Jesus, be the center of your church. Jesus, be the center of your church. And every knee will bow, and every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. <laughs> we confess it, Jesus. We sing it out. G we sing your name, we sing your name tonight. Jesus, 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 from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center, it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you From my heart to the heavens Jesus, be the center 
It's all about to you. Yes, it's all about you, Jesus. We call upon that name. In the day of trouble, and you will hear us, Lord. We call upon your name, Jesus. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem tonight. Pray for safety, Lord. Jesus, you are our Messiah. Just love on him, just love on him, just love on your king. Tonight, we just lean back in your loving arms. You are a beautiful Savior. And we know that you are good. And there's a love like no other. Understands, so I'll stay still until it sinks in. I will lean back, I will lean back, and I will lean back in your loving arms of the beautiful Father. promise God never your love sustained me before I even before I even knew what love was you brought me here to Giving me space to breathe, so I'll stay still until it sinks in. We want your love to sink in tonight. I will lean back in your loving arms of the beautiful Father. Just love on him tonight. I breathe deep and know that he is good. He's a love like no other. Now I can see God. 
now I can see your love is better than all the others that I've seen I'm breathing I'm breathing deep all of your goodness your loving kindness to me now I can see your love is better than all the others that I've seen I'm breathing deep we're breathing in and on all of your goodness your loving kindness to I will lean back in your loving arms of a beautiful Father. Oh. Breathe deep and know that He is good. He's a love like no other. Oh, like lean back, lean back, lean back. In your loving arms of a beautiful Father. Oh, breathe, breathe deep and know that He is good. He's a love like no other. He's a love like no other. He's a love, he's a love like no other. He's a love like no other. We receive, he's a love like no other. His love will sustain us in these end times. Jesus said in Luke 21, 19. Lift up your heads. For your redemption draws nigh. See that you be not troubled. So, Father, we're going to do that by faith. Because of your love for us, Father. This immense love that you have for us, Father. It surrounds us, keeps us drives out all fears, delivers us. We're delivered by your love. And we thank you tonight, Father. That we have communion with you because of the love of Jesus. Thank you, Father. The word says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Thank you, Father. Your loving Savior, a good shepherd. Thank you, Father. We thank you that we're the sheep of your pastures. Thank you. The good shepherd of the sheep. Thank you, Lord. Those of you watching tonight, I want you to know him as your heavenly father. I want you to know him as your friend. He's the good shepherd as well. Thank you tonight. Thank you, Lord. In fact, pray this prayer with me right now. And you can be refathered. Jesus said in Luke, John 8, 44, you are your father, the devil. The, well, before we knew Jesus, that's who our father was. But then we could be refathered at the moment we ask Jesus to be in our lives and to be Lord of our lives and believe in our heart and accept with him with our mouth, confess it. Say this with me, Heavenly Father, I believe with all my heart, Jesus is the Savior of the world. He's come to redeem me. And I invite Jesus right now to be the Lord of my life. Come into my heart and life. Thank you for forgiving me of all my past sins. And I want to be refathered. Thank you, Lord. Saved, washed in the blood. Heaven bound. Thank you for it. You know, if you're a young person, that's for you too. As a matter of fact, we need to catch the young people when they're young. You know, we need to catch people when their hearts are soft and tender as a young person. That's the best time. 
then they tend to stay with it. Well, there's keeping power too, isn't there? He said, for as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, authority to become the sons and daughters of God. Oh, glory to God. Aren't you glad for it tonight? Thank you, Father. Give someone a virtual fist pump there and tell them Jesus loves you. You know, we see all this stuff that's going on right now in Israel, and they're under attack from Hamas. And we want to encourage you to continue to support Israel. You say, what can I do? There's one thing that you can do that's very easy. You can join up with Christians United for Israel, C-U-F-I. Christians United for Israel. Now, we're not asking you to give any money. All we're asking you to do is get online to C-U-F-I, Kufi.org. It's an organization of like 10 million people right now. There's a 10,000. 10 million, I think it is. But you can add your name to that list, and when you do, that exercises support for Israel. C-U-F-I dot org. Kufi dot org. That's right. So just get online and say, I wanted to add my name to that 10 million or 10,000, whatever it is. I forget now. <laughs> I want to add my name to it, and that's going to help to support Israel. Everybody get that? Kufi.org, C-U-F-I, Christians United for Israel. And thank you for your generous offering on a Sunday. You folks gave in to Wings of Faith, and I think $310 came in, and I think I saw another uh, late uh, offering that came in too. So it's actually over $310. Well, we sent the check out. I think it went out today. So to Wings of Faith, so thank you for your generosity and your, your giving, your love for people and those uh, Native Americans in the Four Corners area. Praise God. Well, you ready to give tonight? Hallelujah. The Bible tells us clearly that when we sow, well, Luke 638 is a good one. It says, when you give, it shall be given unto you good measure. Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure. Press down shaken together and running over will men give unto your bosom. So when you sow and you give, it's going to be given. It's going to be a return. There's going to be a return. It's going to be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So thank you for your giving. And ushers, would you come on? Go ahead and pass out the envelopes tonight for your giving. So that was good to highlight wings of faith. And please pray for them. Please pray, pray for America because, by the way, you know that great things are happening in spite of some of the terrible things that are happening. Did you know that this recent census that was just taken resulted in us getting five additional seats in the House of Representatives? That's right. They picked up five new seats in the House. Um, let's see. Illinois lost one, Michigan lost one, Ohio lost one, West Virginia lost one, Pennsylvania lost one house, uh, New York lost a seat, excuse me, these are seats, not houses, <laughs> Texas gained two seats, North Carolina gained one, Colorado gained one, Oregon gained one, Florida gained one, but overall, the red states gained five seats in the House of Representatives. Isn't that wonderful? All because of that reapportionment that came as a result of the census. Come on, let's thank God for that. That's a win for us. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And 35,000 people have moved from California because they don't like what they're seeing, what's going on out there with their liberal mentality and the liberal agenda. So those people, have, many of them have moved to Texas. They found out that when you go woke, you go broke. When you go woke, you go broke. <laughs> so anyhow, thank God. Maybe someday it'll be a red republic. Oh, believe for it to be a red republic. Glory to God. Well, let's go ahead and give today. Ushers, if you would, come on up. Hey, Bob, while you're coming up here, man, how about telling them what's going to happen on the 22nd of, uh, on that Saturday there, what, what you guys are doing? Hey, man, Pastor been talking about the spring harvest, and we are going to go on May 22nd. That's a Saturday and we're going to meet at 1045 and down in Edwards City um, at the plaza. Okay, at the plaza. Um, come on out if you 
talk to talk and you want to walk the walk, come on out because that's what we're going to do. And we're going to walk, we're going to talk and tell them about Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 1045 Saturday morning at the plaza on the 22nd. It's a Saturday morning. Amen. Amen. Father, you're a good, good father. We love you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for the abundance that you have for us in this country. Oh, Father God, we can't just express our thankfulness enough to you, Lord. So thank you, Lord God, because you love us so much. You give us seed to the sower, and then you give us bread to the eater. And, Father God, you increase the fruits of our righteousness, love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, and faith. And, Father, and our love for you, and we thank you for it. And if you can agree with that, can everybody say amen? Amen. amen. Go ahead and give tonight, if you would. Those of you at home can give online. Don't forget. How do they do that, Matt? Just real quick. The number on the screen, uh, you just do it one time, fill out the information, and then the next time you can just text from your phone. And now we can even do categories. So if you want to give 10 bucks to the roof fund, you just hit one zero on your phone space and then spell out roof and enter. And it goes right to the roof fund or the building fund or general. Amen. All throughout my history, faithfulness has walked beside me. It's true, Lord. When the storms made way for spring, in every season from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Help me remember when I'm weak Fear may come but fear may leave Yeah You lead my heart to victory You are my strength God You are my strength And you always will be I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises and fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. See the cross, see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. See the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. Oh, I see the evidence of your goodness. All over my life, all over my life, I see your promises, God. I see your promises in fulfillment. All over my life, all over my I see, yeah, I see the evidence of your goodness. All over my life. All over my life I see your promises and fulfillment All over my life All over my Why should I fear, Lord? And why should I fear The evidence is here why should I fear? 
that the evidence is that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That our righteousness is of you. Not our own righteousness, Lord, which is as filthy rags, but your righteousness. The righteousness we've obtained by the blood of Jesus. Thank you for that precious blood today, yes. Father. Oh, God, we honor the blood. And according to your word, when we do that, the Holy Spirit shows up. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're saved tonight? For that person out there that's battling some shoulder pain, God's healing that right now in Jesus' name. Somebody else is battling some sort of a financial issue. And I want you to trust God and sow to the kingdom of God and watch what God will do on your behalf uh, as an honor to your faith in action. That's right. I just heard of a lady told me the other day there was a long-standing business situation that they were very concerned about. It had to do with the finances. And uh, they told me that uh, they prayed and prayed and, and the breakthrough came and they, they, those finances came in and that whole situation was turned around. So I'm telling you tonight, you may have a similar situation. Trust God tonight. He'll come through for you. He'll intervene on your behalf. Amen. Do you believe it? Shout amen. 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 Go ahead and give somebody a fist bump and you can be seated. Good to see you. By the way, that scripture I meant, I quoted, it wasn't 20, uh, 29 Twenty-one nineteen. It's twenty-one twenty-eight. Look up, lift up your heads, and for your redemption draws nigh. Hallelujah! Aren't you glad? <laughs> Glory to God! I'm glad I know Jesus. You know, I was talking, I was listening actually. Well, for, Father, we thank. You. You're back to be a superhero dog, okay? But he had to change his thinking, he said. And, you know, that's what uh, the situation is with, with Christians. We've got to change our thinking to become aware that healing is for today. Healing was the provision that it was in God's covenant back in the old covenant and in the new covenant. And the Bible tells us don't be fashioned after this world that relies on science and everything else. But be ye fashioned by the renewing of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that you might know what is the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. And what is the will of God? Today, the will of God is healing. I said... Yeah, we did it today, too. Hope we didn't forget. No, we did. All right. <laughs> Make sure. I mean, you don't have to, but I mean, if you'd like to, take communion every single day because it's a way to start off the day. You come to the table, the, the sacrament of the Lord, and you take the blood, 
You take the bread. You take the bread to receive your healing. You take the blood to get right with him. I'm sure that all sins are forgiven. And it's just a way to make contact with God every single morning. And after we do that, then we thank him. We just begin to thank him. Oh, thank you, Father, for what's been, what's been done. Thank you, Lord. So they took communion, or in fact, they observed the Passover, I should say, which was the Old Testament version of it. But then healing will come forth. And so look at uh, Psalm 67, verse 2. Psalm 67, verse 2. And while I'm turning there, I just thought of this too. Thank you, Lord. That you know, Psalm 67, verse 2. When you're thinking about Romans 8, 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities, for we know not what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit... Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Notice where it says, likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities. I heard a preacher say that if you look that up in the Greek, it's not just talking necessarily about a common cold or flu or something. He'll do that too. But he's talking about there that when you pray in the Spirit, it will take care of incurable diseases. That's what the Greek refers to, take care of incurable diseases. If someone's battling an incurable disease, pray in the Holy Ghost. And He's going to help you with that particular malady. Glory to God. Psalm 67, verse 2 says, That thy way may be known upon the earth, thy saving health among all nations. Thy saving health among all nations. How about Isaiah? Go to Isaiah 58. Now, this is a chapter. If you want to know something about fasting and prayer, this is the chapter to go to, Isaiah 58. So, we're being like the little boy, telling Otis, you got to change your thinking. Are you changing your thinking tonight? The Word of God will change your thinking, won't it? Isaiah 58 and verse 8 says, Then they shall break forth, then shall light, Thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily. When's that going to happen? When you fast and pray. God gives us so many different ways in, in order to be healed. He uses the gifts of the Spirit. He'll use us standing on the Word of God. In fact, we'll talk a little bit about that tonight. Um, in fact, let's jump, jump over there right now. Does anybody have a New Living Translation Tonight, anybody have a New Living Translation of the Bible with them? Fred, you have one? Fred, Fred, can I borrow that? In fact, I'll tell you what, so that you can follow along, I'm going to, uh, I'll just trade your Bibles. Go with me to John chapter 5. John chapter 5 and verse 1. John chapter 5 and verse 1. Here, Fred, I'll just trade you. Thank you, sir. John chapter 5. In verse 1, notice what it says here. Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holidays. Inside the city near the sheep gate was the pool of Bethesda with five covered porches. Now, I think in my notes there, it says something about that that porch. Pardon me. Uh, It says uh, the pool is at St. Anne's Church. In Bethesda today, they uncovered it. They know right where this pool is through archaeology and so forth, and it really did exist. Bethesda means house of outpouring, house of outpouring. So it's true. The archaeologists have found this place. 
Or it could be also uh, interpreted house of loving kindness. House of loving kindness. Thank you. So the pool of Bethesda. And there's this strange thing that went on that every so often the waters would be stirred. Now the people thought that this was an angel that came down and stirred the waters. But when they did, something supernatural was going to happen. If you could get your body in that water while the stirring was still going on, you'd get healed. And so that's what this fellow was going to do. Let's see it, what it says here. And so crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get healed? Now, you think, well, why in the world would you ask somebody if they want to be healed? Because, listen, not everyone is sincerely ready to be healed. Some have been so used to their incapacitation that they cannot picture themselves being mobile again or pain-free again. Sometimes their mind has given way to circumstances, and they've adapted to their plight, and they have no vision for ever getting well again. Not so with this man. He wanted to get in the water. He saw himself getting healed. The only problem was he didn't have anybody, a friend or a relative or anybody, that would get him into the water when the water was stirred. So he wanted to get into the uh, stirred up waters. But and the stirring, by the way, the stirring of this water was only sporadic or, ca- or occasional or unpredictable in its timing. It certainly wasn't like Old Faithful, the guys are out in Yosemite National Park, that you can set your clock to it. It, it. it goes off at a specific time. I don't know. Does anybody know? What is it? Every 25 minutes or something that thing goes off? I don't know. But anyhow, it was unpredictable. It was out without warning. There was no regularity in this stirring. And he would hope that someone would quickly help him get in the water, but it didn't happen. So Jesus is saying to him here, Would you like to get healed? And so we know the the man would by his own actions, right? He says, I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else gets always gets there ahead of me. Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. But this miracle happened on the Sabbath. So the Jewish leaders objected. They said to the man who was, your, who was cured, you can't work on the Sabbath. The, Lord does, the law doesn't allow you to carry that sleeping mat. But he replied, the man who healed me told me, pick up your mat and walk. Now, it's interesting. This event probably didn't glorify God all that well because it was the stirring of the water and people had their focus on this water stirring. Maybe it was an angel that stirred it, they thought. But the focus was on the water and little mention of God directly being responsible for the healing. Well, this is kind of akin to maybe the gifts of the Spirit. Sometimes we can get our focus on the gifts of the Spirit thinking, well, I'll go to a Catherine Coleman meeting and I'll be there and they'll have a word of knowledge from me or the gift of faith will go into operation or the working of miracles will go into operation and I'll get called out and I'll get healed. Well, you know, in Catherine Coleman's meetings, not everyone got healed. The reason being, she'd have a word of knowledge for someone over in this section over here. Or maybe this section over here. But what about this section here? Maybe this person, you know, people had uh, infirmities over here didn't get healed. So some of them went home uh, with their ailments. But many did get healed. So, I mean, the, the, um, the gifts of the Spirit are awesome, but I believe Jesus, you know, it's kind of like this situation too. When you think about the stirring of the waters, you're waiting for something to happen supernaturally, and, you know, you could be disappointed, as this man was. So I believe what Jesus said when he said to him, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. What was he doing? He was actually causing that man to look to the Word of God. He is the Word made flesh, isn't he? And so the 
Jesus directed his focus. And it says in Psalm 107, I think it's verse 2, it says, He sent his word and it heals. Jesus is the word made flesh, isn't he? Jesus and his word are one. And so the focus is back on Jesus. It's back on the word of God, isn't it? That's what Jesus wants us to do more than anything because Hebrews 1.3 says he upholds all things by the word of his power. He's upholding this universe by his word that he spoke many centuries ago. Light be, firmament be, and so forth. Matthew 8, 8, the centurion even said, Lord, just speak the word only, and I know my servant will be healed. And remember in, in we've, Hebrews 4, 12, the Bible talks about the Bible being quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, right? Colossians 3, 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So you see, this is far more reliable method to receive your healing and, you know, as, as opposed to maybe a sporadic gift of the Spirit that could go in operation, into operation. By the way, I see the gifts of the Spirit working beautifully outside the church with the sinner. When we take it outside the four walls and the work of, word of knowledge goes into effect and working of miracles and so forth. But I believe God wants us to grow up in the Word and begin to put our attention on His Word. Grow up and become mature. Do you remember there the, the two disciples when they were walking the road to Emmaus? Cleopas and Luke probably were talking, you remember? And they didn't know who this person was that came up behind them. It was Jesus. But he hid himself, his identity from them. And then when they got to the place they were going, they broke bread together and had communion. And when he broke the bread, they recognized, this is the Messiah. And they recognized, this is Jesus raised from the dead. And you've heard me say before, it was kind of like Jesus, the, 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 the incarnate word was concealed until the written word was revealed. And see, Jesus, the whole time he's talking to them, they didn't know who he was. He was pointing them to what happened in the, in the, uh, in the Old Testament with Moses and right up on through the prophets and so forth. And he was giving them the gospel, pointing them to the word of God, see, so, you see, the incarnate word was concealed until the written word was revealed. So, Jesus wants us to have our focus on the word of God to get our healing, and it comes every time when you do that. You don't, it doesn't have to be sporadic like with the gifts of the Spirit. Are you following what I'm saying? Well, now, the Jewish leaders were not happy about this miracle, <laughs> as you well know. They were more focused on the possible infraction of some ceremonial Jewish law weren't they? And there was a religious spirit there, narrow-minded. They should have been excited about this. Hey, listen, if somebody gets healed, praise God, get excited for them. Amen. If you ever want it to happen to you, <laughs> get excited for them, praise God. Absolutely. I mean, if somebody gets healed, I get excited, glory to God. Amen. So they said to Jesus, they accused him of blasphemy, but, you know, well, let's look. Where do we leave off? What verse did I leave off? Now I forget now. Uh, okay. Uh, Jesus. Oh yeah, verse sixteen. So the Jewish leaders began harassing Jesus for breaking Sabbath rules, but Jesus replied, "My Father is always working, and so am I." So the Jewish leaders tried all the harder to find a way to kill him. For not only he not only broke the Sabbath, he called God his Father, thereby making himself equal with God. So they thought he was talking blasphemy there. So anyhow, my point in all this is do not focus on the gifts of the Spirit for your means for getting healed. Rather, focus on imbibing the Word of God. Get full till your expectation runs over. For as we put the Word first, this is the surefire method for receiving your miracle, right? This will glorify God. And what does it say? In 1 John 5, 4, here, I'll trade you back, Fred. Thank you. <laughs> 1 John 5, 4 said, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, and he hears us, and he knows, and we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Amen? It behooves us 
then to put the Word first in our lives. That's the thing that Jesus really wanted us to do. Deuteronomy, let's go to, uh, no, let's go to 2 Chronicles 6.14. 2 Chronicles 6.14. 2 Chronicles 6.14. 14 says, And he said, O Lord of God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven, nor in the earth, which keepest covenant. Which keeps covenant. See, you have a covenant with God, and no one keeps covenant like him. This covenant, he says, I will not alter one word of this covenant. He, you keep covenant and show mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts. Glory to God. So when we walk before him with all of our hearts, I'm telling you, he's going to come through for us. Now, how about the whole subject of longevity? Because that's related to health, isn't it? If you have good health, you're going to have longevity, right? You've heard it said, well, I'm going to live long, live strong, and live healthy. That's a good thing to say all the time. Live long, live strong, and add that other part, too. You want to live healthy, right? And so let's take a look at longevity for a moment here. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, as we... We'll wrap it up here tonight, but let me just wet your whistle on this a little bit. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Paul, if you want to get that little uh, audio geared up there, maybe fast forward about 30 seconds there. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 17 says, Be not overmuch wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Are we changing our thinking? Why should we die before our time? But well, what is our time? Genesis 6, 3 says, The years of man are 120 years. You say, I don't know if I'll make 120 years. Well, it would be nice if we made 103. I know a lady that made 103. This lady was preaching. Her name is Sister B. And she preached till she was 103 years old. Paul, you want to play just a couple seconds of this lady? We'll hear her voice then. Okay, Paul, thank you. 103, year, 103 years old. She, she uh, yeah, she said, whatever sickness there's been, she says, I probably had it, but God's rescued me from every single one of them. Cancer, everything else. And she preached right here in Elwood City. Now, she did finally pass away, but that she was 103 years old right there when she was preaching. Well, what's the Bible say? With long life, I'll satisfy you, and the length of your days I will fulfill. Let's, start, let's change our mentality. Remember little Otis? <laughs> Otis, you got to change your thinking and, start, and begin to stop thinking, well, I'm getting old here at 75 years old. I mean, I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm, my mind's probably going to start slipping here. Hey, stop saying that. Amen. Well, I probably have Alzheimer's or dementia. No, don't say that. Well, you know, it's hard to remember things these days. Stop saying that. And begin to get a new vision that you're going to live long in the earth because it has something to do with the way you think and the way you've been programmed. Amen? Come on now. Well, I had a whole lot more about longevity, but I, th I think I better stop right there. Let's stand. Thank you, Lord. Maybe we'll do that. So, so it behooves us to soak up the word concerning longevity. So, I mean, you can look some of these scriptures up yourself if you like. Psalm 94, 91, 14 to 15, Proverbs 10, 27. I got a whole bunch of them here, but I'm not giving them to you tonight. But think about it. I mean, if you shoot for 100, 100 and you only make 98, that's still not too bad, right? <laughs> that's still long life, right? Amen. Amen. So let's change our thinking and... Uh, you know, some people say, well, in Psalm 92, it's talking about 
uh, three score and ten and four score by reason of strength. That's sixty to that's seventy to eighty years. Well, wait a minute. That particular passage of scripture f- was referring to when the children of Israel were disobedient, and they were limited to seventy or eighty years. Check it out for yourself. But uh, Genesis six three says, "Hey, we can be centenarians." How many think, yeah, I think I'll shoot for being a centenarian. All right. <laughs> well, now, if you're, if, you're, if you're pickling your liver by being an alcoholic or smoking like a, a chimney, uh, you're, you're, you're heading in the wrong direction. You're, you're working against God, okay? Uh, if you're living a, a sinful life and just carousing and carrying on, no, uh, you're working against God. But longevity is in the Bible, praise God. Father, thank you tonight. We see your word, Father, and we thank you for it. You're so good, Lord. You said, with long life, I'll satisfy you, and the length of your days I will fulfill. Thank you for it, Father. We bless you now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. God bless you. Have a great evening.